Leeds United have gotten to a playoff final. They're playing at Wembley for the first time that I've ever had the opportunity to go and watch Leeds United play at Wembley. And it is admittedly incredibly easy to overthink football. So let's limit that as much as possible by giving ourselves just three words to describe every Leeds United player's experience in the playoff final and at Wembley. We do have some players that aren't listed. We have quite a lot of players that aren't listed. Christopher Klaassen, Tristan van den Heuvel, Leo Hjelder, Cody Drame, Jed Spence, Luke Ayling, Charlie Crew, Lewis Bate, Darko JB, Sam Greenwood, Lone Rat Louise, I'm not going to give him his surname, Jan Pervedo, and Sonny Perkins. All of these are players that have spent time at Leeds United within a squad at some point, aren't currently at the side, or you've also got Charlie Crew, who isn't getting picked. Uh, and I think it would be fun to include them on the list. So, let's get started. I'm going to go as fast as I can through each of these players, so hope you enjoy. First up, we have Elon Mellier. In my opinion, he will make a single worldy save. I feel like he won't have that much to do, but when he's asked, he will absolutely deliver. I have absolutely no doubt about that. I trust him immensely. Carl Darlow, thankfully not playing. Whenever we've seen him do distribution, it has not paid off in the slightest. It always terrifies absolutely everyone, and it's a little bit spooky-booky. So, the fact that he's not in the squad is, in my opinion, not going to be the biggest of issues. He might be on the bench, he might be able to lift the trophy afterwards, but I don't think he'll see any time on the pitch. Next up, we have Junior Furpo, who, in my opinion, will be huge for the performance. Huge for performance. I accidentally said four words. I meant three. It's fine. I think if Junior Furpo is able to perform at a good level, that means that Leeds United will perform at a good level. He's someone that is completely reliable in recent days, weeks, months, and yeah, I can see him being immense. I can see him getting an assist, and I can see him being a big part of this match. Sam Byram, zero minutes played. I think he gets on the bench. I don't think he comes on because I don't think we'll need him unless there's an injury or something weird like that. Sorry, Sam, you've been great this season but maybe not on Sunday. Next up, Ethan Ampadu. I've gone with him having a quiet, underrated performance. The way he controls opposing teams by just positioning himself perfectly is, as mentioned, colossally underrated. I think it is huge to the way that Leeds United play. And yeah, I think he'll look like he's been quiet. It'll look like he's not done very much, but I think he'll make a difference. Next up, I've gone Joe Rodon, and I am going to say huge performance coming. Joe Rodon in the first semi-final leg against Norwich, in my opinion, was massive, colossal, huge. Made a big difference for the side by with like multiple recovery tackles, covering for Sam Byram on his side, who would occasionally wander up the pitch. Will it work out? I hope so. I think he'll make some big tackles, we'll be fine. Next up, Charlie Cresswell. I've gone with really unfortunate season. He's someone where if things would have been a little bit different for him, if he would have come into the season with the right attitude, I think Charlie Crosswell could have had a massive breakthrough this season, but it's not happened because apparently attitude issues behind the scenes and that's not really what you want from someone that is going to play for your side long term. I do think this will be the last time that we see Charlie Crosswell. I don't know if we'll see him on the pitch, but I can't see him being a big part for the Whites in the long term. Next up, Liam Cooper. I've gone... A little bit gentle. Captain's final moments. Let's be honest, he's not signing a new contract after this match. This is going to be his last time, and I think his final moments in a perfect world are like a throwback to when we got promoted the first time round under Marcelo Bielsa to Liam Cooper, club captain, lifting the trophy. That would be absolutely perfect, in my opinion, at the very least. Connor Roberts... I've gone sort of sad season. I think Connor Roberts could have had a hell of a lot more to do this season, but it's not necessarily been the case. He's been very, very injured since he joined Leeds United. He's not played a big role in the side, and it's a little bit unfortunate. I think Connor Roberts could have done a little bit better this season, and I think if it would have been anyone but Archie Gray's competing against for that spot, he would have pushed his way in. Didn't quite happen. Someone else that it didn't quite happen for this season is Jamie Shackleton. I'm going to keep it very simple on this one. Uh, because Shackleton is someone that a couple of years ago we looked at as insanely promising and bound to have a fantastic career at Leeds United. And all I can say is... You're still here? 
Archie Gray, and I think the best way you can describe both him in the game coming up and across the season is absolutely everywhere, always. The amount of running that Archie Gray does is absolutely incredible, and I think he will be key to this playoff final. If he can do that overlapping stuff he was doing against Norwich in the second leg, brilliant. We're sorted. We're fine. If that doesn't necessarily happen, could be a little bit of a problem. Next up, Ilya Gruev, because we're shifting into midfield, and in my opinion, he's in the position of definitely gets booked. Ilya Gruev has a booking in him. We know this for sure. I, th I think it, it, it feels like he's going to make a late tackle at some point. I think, yeah, he's going to get booked, isn't he? Next up, Glenn Kamara, and I believe that this isn't necessarily going to be about his performance, but he's definitely going to get a huge passing accuracy in this game. The amount of times that both Leeds and Southampton like to play those passes across midfield to just retain the ball, try and pull other teams out of position. Kamara's going to be stat padding in this match. I have no doubt about that, but let's hope that he can find that killer ball a couple of times and we will be fine. Next up, Jaden Anthony. I've quite simply gone, doesn't get minutes. I don't think Jaden Anthony gets on the pitch, to be honest with you, because I don't know if we'll need him. I think we have enough players and enough quality to win this game without having to resort to throw all the attackers on at the end, which we tend to do a little bit as a club, but I don't think it's going to have to happen this time around, and we've got Dan James anyway, so it's fine. Willie Nonto, I have gone with, uh, quite simply, a noise manning bookings. Note that I've said bookings, plural, not one because we know that Willy Nonto has it in him to try and shithouse another player, but end up getting himself a yellow card, which would be incredibly silly, but it is absolutely something that he will do. I don't have a doubt. I feel like Nonto gets booked, Gruev gets booked, but both of them are funny and worth it. Next up, Dan James. Very, very simple. Runs like hell. This is what Dan James does anyway, and I feel like being a playoff final means that He's going to do it again. I think he's going to come off the bench. He's going to get plenty of minutes. And I think it is going to go spectacularly for him. Just because that's the sort of player that he is. He's someone that puts in the effort. Someone that does the running. Someone that works really hard. And I think we're going to see that in the second half. He won't start. But off the bench, Dan James will run his tiny, tiny legs off. Crescencio Somerville. I've gone with frustrating but works. We know what Somerville can be like when he's trying to sort of dribble his way up the pitch. He likes to cut in, he likes to have a shot. If he can't cut in, he'll sort of do the tappy-tappy thing where he's like, oh, I'm getting closer to you. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. But it ends up not leading to a shot. I think we'll see a lot of that. Occasionally he'll have one or two efforts, but I think it'll work out. I think he will have a decent enough performance. A better performance than Joe Gellhart. You're here too. I forgot that Joffy was at the club for an extended period. When I was writing this little script, I was like, right, okay, so we've got this player, this player, this player, this player. We've got Shackleton. And Gelhart was the player where I was like, oh, yeah. Joffy's at Leeds. Confused me a little bit, but that's completely fine. Next up, Jorginho Ruta. I believe that with his dribbling, there'll be another one of those moments where he picks up the ball, gets a nice little pass at some point, and quite simply, everyone in the crowd goes, how? 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 We won't understand how he's done what he's done, but he'll do it. And it will feel absolutely magical. Next up, Patrick Bamford. Injury issues. Sad. I like Pat. I We all know this. I like Pat Bamford. He plays effectively. He might not be that pure goal scorer that a lot of Leeds fans love and want, but... He's himself, and I quite like it. So it's going to be a little bit sad that he won't be able to be on the pitch at any point. Next up, Joel Piru. I've gone with hopefully great movement. What we saw against Norwich in the home leg was the fact that Piru was able to sort of shift around the pitch and cause the other side some problems. If he can replicate that, we'll be absolutely fine. If he can't, and we don't have that great movement, potentially problems. And finally, Matteo Joseph. He gets late minutes. I don't think he starts. But I think off the bench, he'll get a couple of minutes, whether or not we're wasting time or trying to win the match. I have zero doubt that Matteo Joseph will get some time on the pitch. And that's the squad. So, 
Let me know what you think down in the comments below. It's always massively appreciated. Subscribe if you aren't yet. I'm trying to get to 3,500 by the playoff final, which would be spectacular. Even become a channel member. That's always massively appreciated because all that money is going to Prostate Cancer UK at the moment. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope things go well tomorrow. I will see you later. I hope I didn't forget anyone. I'd feel really bad if I forgot someone.